been great to me, even though I don't deserve it. You are worthy, God, beyond you with everything, oh God. We release a sound, hallelujah. Awesome, awesome, right now.
with your own voice, with your own voice, just lift up your thanks to your Father this morning. Bless Him, exalt Him, magnify Him. He's worthy of your thanksgiving. He's worthy of your thanksgiving. I need you to focus on a reason why you know you must give Him thanks this morning. If you can't think of any big reason, the fact that you are alive and you are here is more than enough reason for you to give Him thanks. Just bless Him this morning. Father, we thank You. Great God, we thank You. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, oh God, for Your keeping power, oh God, we are so grateful. Father, we want to say thank You. Mighty God, we've come to say thank You for how You have kept us from where You have brought us for Your goodness over our lives keeping all that concerns us, keeping our loved ones, our children, our job, our business, keeping our minds, keeping us in good health, keeping us, oh God, we say thank you. We look around us and all we see is your goodness. All we see is your faithfulness. All we see are your mercies. New every morning. Ah, mazata naza braga dog shata na yaga bagadia. Rika kota pana zi braga dog shata. For saving us, oh God. For coming for us, oh God. Makina moza tada ba yika dog shandere de bosata. You didn't have to, oh God. But you did anyway. And we are so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah to your great name. Hallelujah to your great name. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you. We acknowledge your presence in this place this morning. Thank you for your sweet presence in our midst. Ah, masina kota yaga dog shanta yaga doza bragadia. Rika kota maza tanda kata bragadia. Thank you for all that you are set to do, oh God. Thank you for the lives that will be changed completely. Thank you for those that will come to know you by reason of today's service. Thank you for the healings that will take place. Thank you, oh God. Healings in our bodies, healings in our mind, healing in our spirit, oh God. We give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. Rika kota paza braga do shata. Rika tana yida zita naza braga do shande. We give you praise, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, great God. Thank you, great God. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' name. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God bless you. Please don't sit down yet. We're still praying. Please don't sit down. We're still praying. But it's good to see all the beautiful faces in the house. God bless you for coming. I'd like to recognize my father, my pastor, my first KICC pastor, Pastor Dick Paul Luyami. So good to see you, sir. <laughs> Please come. Yes, yes, celebrate him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Pastor Andy is also in the house. Pastor Helen, good to see you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. God richly bless you. Okay, so it's time for us to pray. Please, let's go to the book of um, Deuteronomy. KICC, August is our month of, our month of what? Conquest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1 that we have some lands that we're about to take over, right? Hallelujah. 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 We're going, where are we going to? We're going to Edmonton. We're going to Vancouver. We're going to Halifax. Hallelujah. We're going to Montreal. Hallelujah. This morning we want to take over those places in the spirit. Hallelujah. We want to go in in the spirit and just take over and say, Father, even as we go into these cities, as we go into these cities in the coming months, Father, we thank you because souls, we are bringing in souls into the kingdom. We are taking over the land for Jesus. We are taking over the people in those lands for Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I just need you to lift up your voices this morning and say, Father, as we go, as we go as a people, you give us utterance. You give us utterance. You, all, you help us to know what we ought to do. You help us to know what we ought to say. You help us to say the right things 
O oh God, that will capture the hearts of men, that will capture the hearts of women, it will capture the hearts of the young and the old. For Jesus, we take over End Meeting for Jesus. We take over Halifax for Jesus. We take over Montreal for Jesus. We take over the city of Vancouver for Jesus. Spirit of God, go before us. Go before us and begin to do a walk. Go before us and begin to do a walk. Begin to ready the hearts, the hearts of the people that must be turned over to you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We go in according to your word and we take over. We take it, oh God. We take it because you have given it to us. We take it because you have given it to us. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. It is ours for the taking. It is ours for the taking to the glory and the praise of your great name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And even as we go, we'll bring back spoils. Spoils. Hallelujah. Souls. Souls of men and women for Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want you to just lift your voice and say, Father, even as I've come into your presence today, I refuse to live the same way that I came. I refuse to leave the same person. I refuse to leave how I came, oh God. I choose to be touched by you this morning. I choose for your word to come and find a ready heart. A heart that is ready to receive your word. A heart that is ready to run with the word that I will receive this morning. A heart that is ready for the word to change me, change that situation. Thank you, oh God, because indeed that is what you are doing. Today, that is what you are doing. I will not live here the same person. I will not live here the way that I came because I know that I have encountered you. I will know that in Indeed, I have touched you, oh God. I thank you, I thank you, I give you praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Finally, let's just read Psalms 91, verse 1 to 4 together. Sorry, Psalm 93. Psalm 93, if you have a good hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, I'll just need you to read the first verse. I'll read the second verse, and we'll read the last verse together, verse 4. Okay, please start. Hallelujah. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. Verse 3. Verse 4, we'll take it together. But mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore the lord above is mightier than these hallelujah hallelujah let us welcome on stage pastor helen to take us into the next session of ministration hallelujah
What a fun. 
you are near in the midst of fear. Help me know that you are near on that mountain in that deep valley. Help me know that you are near. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Lord, I am with you to the end.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and lift up your voice and begin to bless the King of Kings in the language of the Spirit of the living God. Because there is no one like Jesus. There is none compared to Jesus. Ranamasekiba. Rima and Osekidi Brianda Basori Kiba. Rata Tata Medi Brianda Bosa Tandaria Kabat. Or else may fail, but Jesus will never fail. Ah, ye Brianda Mosekete. E Marika Nama Setariedaba. In his house, we serve the God. In his house, we serve the King of Kings. In his house, we magnify the great I am that I am. And his name is Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and bless his name. Rateba, E Matoria, E Marinia, Masekeba, Rinia Daba Setereba, Marini Marine Deba Sadaba. Over your family, over your church, over the church, over your ministry. Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns. Rata Sekeba, Rima Sekana Riedeba, Ranana Masekete de Debo Keba, Ranana Masekete de Boa. Ranana masekete de boa, ranana masekete de boa, e marica da masekete de boa. Jesus reigns. There is none like Jesus. Rabba sekete de ba kata. Everyone else may fail, but Jesus, Jesus, he never fails. We're going to pray this morning, even as we bless His holy name. I know you know the story of the Shunammite woman, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 17. We're going to read through 23, then we pray. Hallelujah. This is after the world, the man of God came for this woman, that surely by this time next year, you will give birth to a son. Bible says, but sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. And one day when her child was older, he went out to help his father who was walking with the avarices. Suddenly, he cried out, my head hurts, my head hurts. His father said to one of his servants, carry him home to his mother. So the servant took him home. And his mother held him on her lap, but around noon time, he died. She carried him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and left him there. Hallelujah. She sent a message to her husband. Send one of the servants and a donkey so that I can hurry to the man of God and come right back. But the husband said, why go today, he asked. It is neither a new moon festival no sabbath but she said it will be all right hallelujah and that same verse in the message translation says she said don't ask questions i need to go right now trust me i don't know what issue what circumstance has brought you here today but there's grace available for you to bring it before the throne of grace because the king of kings the lord of lords uh, by the time he blesses there is no sorrow hearted uh, i know the enemy may plant us uh, the enemy may plant ill but by, by the time you come before, before the presence of god there will be restoration uh, so i say this morning lift up your voice uh, wherever you are as you have come before the throne of grace uh, i come to receive uh, i come to receive today uh, so lift up your voice uh, that same thing that same reporter uh, today in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, there will be a reversal uh, because they're bringing before the throne of grace. Uh, there will be restoration. Uh, that which was dead coming to life uh, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, lift up your voice. Uh, I come to clean. Uh, I come to draw. I come to receive uh, from the presence of the living God. Uh, I am not a spectator. I am not here to analyze or ask questions, uh, but I am here to receive uh, and I will receive. Uh, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus right before his throne this morning I will receive it oh the Lord asks for me I will receive it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus can you lift up your voice I'm going to pray as a woman has faith believing that all I need to do is lay him down in the bed where grace is available this morning there will be restoration there will be healing answers to questions I need not ask I need not analyze but I need to just believe I need to have an expectation and there will be a release from the throne of grace there will be a release I can't believe it I come with an expectation and as the word of the Lord has said my expectation will not be cut short but there will be a fulfillment of that which my father has commanded for me this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus come and lift up your voice and bless him lift up your voice and magnify lift up your voice and exalt the king of kings father we bless and give you praise we magnify your name the one with whom nothing is impossible Blessed be your name, our Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we have our seat this morning, just look to your left, to your right. Welcome someone. Tell them they are blessed in the name of our Lord Jesus. I see the goodness of the Lord all over your life. I see your favor. I see the Lord showing up for you today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a testimony. Hallelujah. We're going to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read this wonderful testimony this morning. And it says, Dear KICC, Good day, brethren and family. I want to thank God for my life and family. It hasn't been easy for me for the past months. I was looking for a job. And at the same time, facing all the personal challenges along the line. And due to all this happening, I was discouraged and almost gave up on everything. Because at some point, I was mocked for serving God. But I want to thank God for the Holy Spirit that always comforts me when I'm almost about to give up. And thank God for using PD, Pastor Dyer, and Pastor Mrs. Lorade to speak to me through their sermon and I didn't give up but kept believing and appreciating God despite all the challenges and finally I got the job hallelujah finally I got the job hallelujah and things are getting better hallelujah and better for me praise God I am blessed to be a part of KICC and thank God for this great family of KICC I'm always grateful to be a part of KICC because I'm not here by mistake, but by God's will. Let us always remember to give thanks to God and appreciate Him in every situation. Thanks and praise to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! Just two people are happy to hear that testimony. Okay, a few more people. Glory to Jesus! It's a special Sunday. Are you glad you're in God's presence? Help me just turn to your neighbor and smile. Just smile. I'm scanning the room. If your neighbor is not smiling, then we're going to get them a new seat. The only issue is I don't think we have spare seats. So that person is going to come to the front. Glory to God. Are you enjoying yourself in God's presence so far? I just want us to take a minute to thank God for that testimony. Um, the thing with testimonies is we share the abridged version. They summarized the abridged version. But the details were not tidy at all. But our God is good. I said our God is good. So is it okay if you just help me raise your hands to heaven and say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Father, I return all the glory to your name. For the one we've heard and the many testimonies on cue. That time will not permit us to share. We acknowledge that you are the doer of great things. Sometimes we mention the names of the vessels you use. 
but we've come to acknowledge that you are the doer of miracles and so for all the testimonies we say thank you for all the healings we say thank you and for what you are set to do in our midst today we say thank you glory be unto your name for in jesus name we have worshiped come on if you brought those hands to church it's still okay to jam them together give the lord a big shout glory to god wow where do we begin it's a very very special sunday and um i think first and foremost i just want to recognize and um a mother in the house um pastor mrs adebayo she's no stranger to us please help me celebrate our mommy mommy god bless you ma for being here thank you god bless you god bless you ma. a few a few weeks ago um we had our pastor from kicc port Harcourt. Um, visit us, Pastor Chine Dooba. Um, today, we are also honored to have his wife. His wife is in the room. Please help me celebrate the woman of God. Please help me celebrate her well, 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 well. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for coming. PL has honored our pastor before we had the opportunity to do it. But he's also my boss. So I need to do it properly. Amen? Amen. And you also have to help me do it properly. So, Canada, will you welcome Dr. Zippo well? I need to ask you before I ask you, will you do it well? All right, so all the way from KICC, the Open Door, United Kingdom, we have with us the CEO of KICC, the resident pastor of the Open Door, PD's boss is in the room live and direct. Please help me celebrate Pastor Zippo Oluyomi with a standing ovation. Do it well, do it well. Thank you so much, sir. We are honored to have you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Uh, because you will stand again. You will stand again. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Um, a couple of years ago, I boarded a plane to Accra, Ghana. On the flight, I had all sorts on my mind. Like, God, what am I doing here? Why am I here? What does my future hold? As a young man with so many questions, and I just look around the room, see so many young people. I want to encourage everyone to tap into the grace that is in the house today. Um, and, and so I just got to KICC Dominion Center. It was a midweek service, my first service. And I was like, wow, amazing. That was my first KICC experience outside of um, Prayer Dome. And it was phenomenal. I met Pastor Andy. I was there for one month. But the impact in my life, we're still seeing it today. Okay, okay. I will just tell Pastor Andy to just. You guys don't sound. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? All right. Before I recognize Pastor Andy and Pastor Ellen, um, they are here with their family. Um, their daughters are here and son, son. I won't say son-in-law. Son is also in the room. Please help me celebrate the your sins. Thank you so much for being here. And then PD's personal pastors all the way. From KICC Dominion Center, Accra, Ghana, help me welcome Pastor Ellen. And also, as we receive to the stage, Pastor Andy. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Oh, praise God. Shall we please pray whilst we are standing? Father, we thank you so much. We bless you. Lord, we ask that you have your way. May your perfect purpose concerning this service be done in the name of Jesus. Speak to each and every one of us this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so honored to be here this morning. And um, afternoon, as you say, it's past 12, isn't it? This afternoon. As... Um, Pastor Dyer was doing introductions. I sat there and thought, uh, well, your Sunday service has become like an international conference, isn't it? <laughs> you have people from Port Harcourt and UK and all sorts of places showing up. We bless God. I believe it's a sign of greater things to come. Yeah. Amen. And um, as you mentioned earlier today, I dragged my entire family here. My two daughters and my son, in fact, refer to them as your sons, but um, there's only, only one your son left now. They are Opokus, Mr. and Mrs. Opoku in the corner there, Edward and Anita. <laughs> Praise God. Because um, last year I became a father-in-law. 
very strange. We bless God for his goodness. Amen. But we thank God. We thank God for bringing us today together to share fellowship. And I bless God for the, his presence in this place. This place is just a launch pad to greater things. I'm so convinced about that. And um, your pastor, Pastor Dipo, um, Pastor Dio, I got, I got Pastor Dipo here as well, you see. Yeah, we go back a long way, long, long way. I was his best man at his wedding several decades ago. I think he's married for about 100 years now. <laughs> we bless God. But uh, just as um, Pastor Dio said, we're in KICC Dominion Center when he came, joined us, and um, I'll never forget it. Because um, whenever I walk into the service and I see someone on the keyboard like that, it reminds me of him. Because he used to play the keyboard for us. And he was so consistent. So consistent. On those rainy Wednesday evenings that no one wants to show up in church, if you turn to your left, you will see him on that keyboard. And at the time, he was in school. He was studying. He had every reason not to show up. But every midweek service, you will see him there. Every Sunday service, you will see him there. And it's my prayer that that same grace will rest upon you as stewards in this house. Amen? As stewards of this house, that this will happen. Don't worry, I'm not saying anymore. But we bless God. We bless God for the life of our brother. And I thank God for how far he's brought him. This morning, I want to share just a word of encouragement with us. As we are spending this year in his presence, this year has been declared as a year of evident progress. May progress be evident in your life. I'm convinced that favor will break out in your life in various ways. And it's important that you and I learn how to carry that favor as it rests on our lives. I want to read a portion of scripture and then we'll take it from there. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse 17 to 25. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse 17 to 25. And I read. It says, now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Verse 19. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perizim and defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of the place Baal Perizim. 21. And they left their images there. And David and his men carried them away. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord and he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the voice, the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. The last verse 25. And David did so. As the Lord commanded him, and he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Geza. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you very briefly under the topic, when God is our helper. When God is our helper. In this account that we've just read, we read of battles that David encountered once he became king and his approach to these challenges has a few learning points for us to pick up this afternoon and I trust that it will be a blessing for us because as we seek to walk in the blessings in this year of evident progress there are a couple of things we need to understand the scripture tells us that when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel all of them showed up in search for David. All of them showed up in search. 
David ascent to the throne brought about many reactions. Undoubtedly, there were some who rejoiced because David had become king. But the Philistines had other ideas. The Bible says they all showed up. And when they showed up, David heard of it. When he heard it, he didn't throw a welcome party. He went down to the stronghold. He knew that these people were not there with good intentions. A blessing, and it's important for us to understand, the fact that God blesses you, the fact that God opens a door for you, does not always mean the end of your battles. The fact that that happens, it doesn't mean the end of your battle. So often, it actually means that the level of battles you're about to walk in has changed. It's important we understand that because battles come in levels. And sometimes you pray for God to open a door and he opens the door and you're excited about it and you walk into it only to find that having entered that door, there are other battles waiting for you. Is it not interesting that I'm very sure that as we are here, there are some people who are praying that they will, God will open a door for them to travel to Canada. As we are sitting here, there are some people who are praying somewhere else. God opened the door. God opened the door. God opened the door. God opened that door for you. You came. Have you noticed that since that topic went off your prayer list, other things have taken place. In fact, for some of us, other issues have shown up on your prayer list that are mightier. And suddenly they have occupied the space on that list. Now, why is that happening? Why is it important to take note of that? You see, when you experience a blessing, when you see certain progress happening in your life, it does not mean and should never mean that now that that door has opened, I don't need God as much as I need to leave him. Because that's where sometimes we make a mistake. Some get a breakthrough in their business and suddenly they are too busy to call on God. Because a new job has happened. Some get married and suddenly they go on pension from serving in the house of God. If you don't understand what I mean. They were available to serve in the house of God until God blessed them with a married partner and suddenly that's it. I'm too busy to do this and that and that and that for God. Understand that that blessing is just the beginning to a new level of new battles and new blessings it's just a stage it's not an end in itself it takes prayer to see doors open but let me suggest to you this afternoon that it even takes more prayer and more dedication to keep some doors open some will open when you step in but once you have stepped in you come to a new territory and other things begin to happen it is important that we understand as children of God, you and I are not serving God just so that God will give us one blessing. You are serving God because it's a relationship with the Father. In fact, may I humbly suggest to you that blessings should not be your motive for serving God. The blessings of God is a byproduct of the process of walking with God. As you walk with him, blessings flow. He said to Isaac in Genesis 26, I will be with you and I will bless you. His presence, when his presence comes, his blessings is assured. Don't get it the other way around. You are not serving him because you are looking for that one breakthrough. Then what happens after that one breakthrough? That's why some people backslide. Because their God was one breakthrough. No. Your walk with him. If God becomes your helper, there are certain things that happen as far as your relationship with the Father is concerned. And my prayer to you in this encouragement that I want to share with you is that God will truly become your helper. That in fact, God will not just be one you meet somewhere and he blesses you one time and that's it. No. May he become your helper. What do I mean by that? It's important for us to understand. You see, in the book of Proverbs, in the popular scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, to verse 8 and we like to quote especially verse 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 8 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding which is true. Now look at verse 6. In all your ways he says what? Acknowledge him but it doesn't stop there. And he shall direct your path. Then he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. He will direct your path. In all your ways, he says, acknowledge him and he shall do what? Direct your 
path. As you acknowledge him, it doesn't end there. If you acknowledge him and you are available to him, your ears are available to his voice, he will direct your path. You don't just acknowledge him because one door has opened and walk off to do your own thing. No, when God becomes your helper, there's something that happens. God will start to direct your path. Now, not everyone who sits in the house of God is in that position. There are some who treat God as an instructor. And there are some who treat God as a helper. And what do I mean by that? You see, a, an instructor can teach you and provide you all the information you need. Almost every single one of us, we had lecturers in university that taught us things. They taught us. And yes, they equipped us. But after that, we graduated. And we left campus. And you came here. You're doing whatever it is you're doing. Now, your instructor is not there to direct your path. They have provided information. But when God becomes your helper, he goes further than instructing you. He is now available to direct your path. What do I mean by that? It's important we understand this. When you go back to the story we just read at the beginning, in 2 Samuel, verse 5, when this major breakthrough happened, when the Philistines came up, deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim, verse 18, verse 19, the Lord is approached by David and he says, shall I go up? God said, go up. I will doubtless, doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Now, when God says doubtless, I humbly suggest you, it means doubtless. It means without a shadow of a doubt, I will deliver them. And so that happens and he gives his testimony. He says, look, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. So he calls the place Baal, Parazim. And in fact, they were so trounced in that battle that they left their images there and ran off. But the Bible says in verse 22, then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the same valley of Rephaim. Wasn't it God who said, I would doubtless, doubtless give you victory over these people. Now they show up and they show up in the same place, ready for battle again. Some demons are stubborn. Quite frankly, some demons are stubborn. And this is the reason why you cannot afford the luxury of having God as just your instructor. That you have a one-touch relationship and you leave. No. Because there are some battles that will keep showing up. They came and settled in the same valley of Rephaim. They showed up there. But you see, there is something that this lesson for me teaches. When they showed up, David did not say, well, I'm a king. Tell the forces, the army that I have at my disposal, tell them to go and fight them. After all, I'm a king. I have the army. If they have shown up, go and deal with them again. But what happens in the next verse? Verse 20. They show up. Now, these guys have come for battle. Sorry, in verse 23. It says, therefore, David inquired of the Lord. Again. And when he inquired, what really, really trips me is this. He inquired of the Lord and the Lord said, you shall not go up. Is it okay to do a bit of teaching? Go back. When he inquired the first time, what did God say? Verse 19. He said, go up. He said, go up. And this time he goes back and he inquires again in verse 23. And the Bible says, the Lord said to him, you shall not go up. Plans have changed. Plans have changed. God has decided we are going to use a new strategy in this battle. And so you are not going up again. The first time you're supposed to go up, you went up and you had a victory in that battle. But now something has changed. He goes, he calls, and God says, don't go up. In fact, don't go up. I've got something I need to show you. And then he lays out a rather incredible strategy. 
He says, you shall not go up. Circle around behind them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And not just that. Don't just come. It shall be that when you hear the sound of marching on the tops of the mulberry tree, then that's your time. It's your opportunity to advance quickly for the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Question. What if David had not prayed the second time? That's the difference between those who treat God as an instructor and those who have God as their helper who's ready to direct their path. Because if you hang around long enough, you'll get some details. If you hang around long enough, you will get some details. In fact, if you are around long enough, you will get to know in case something changes in heaven. If you are around long enough, if you are in touch long enough, when something starts to happen in the realms of the spirit, you will receive the tweet. Because you are in touch. You are in touch. You are not the one who just got a memo at the beginning. And you never went back again. So you are still holding on to all the information and say, these guys, are, they are back in the valley of Rephraim. No problem. Send an army. They will whip you and you will be shocked. That is when people then start taking issue with God. Why? Has God abandoned? No, he hasn't abandoned you. Step up your walk with him. Step up your walk with him. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you just acknowledge him in the first part and the first testimony came and suddenly you graduated from your walk with God. And so now, heaven doesn't hear of you that often. No wonder you don't get to know when anything is trending in heaven. You don't get to know. God decided the first time, I gave this guy victory. But now, I'm going to show him something. This time, I'm going to fight the battle for him myself. But I'm going to give him direct instructions on what to do. Where to position yourself. So that by the time I show up, when you hear the sound of the marching on the mulberry trees, it's the time for you to advance quickly. It will look as if it was your smartness that gave the victory. But no, it's a setup. That was basically heaven saying, look, this is the strategy. This is how we're going to set it up. And it's going to make you look so good. Because when you advance quickly at the right time, people will think you are the one winning the battle. He said, no, I will go out before you just on time and I will grant you a total victory. Strike the camp of these Philistines. By the time you show up at the camp, they are gone. And everybody's going to think, boy, this guy is so smart. Look at how he got that victory. No, it's simply someone who has learned to have God as their helper. Someone who has learned to plug in to regular instruction from heaven. Someone who knows that we serve a God who can say, yes, for this first stage of the battle, go up. For the next stage, don't go. I'm going to fight it myself. Use a different route. But so often, most of us will do the first part all right. Because the first part is easy for people to hear. Oh, God will give us victory. He will open the door. The breakthrough will come. Amen. We shall receive it and it shall be so. But after that, other things will show up. And that is where those who have God as their helper will hear that voice. That voice that says, for this particular one, don't answer back. For this particular one, don't respond to that email in that tone. For this particular one, just wait a little bit more. Because I'm up to something. I'm up to something. In fact, everybody is angry and want to respond and want to do something. But for this particular one, don't join them. Because yours is coming from somewhere else. Whilst you are queuing to the east for their breakthrough, you are standing at the back of the queue and a testimony will break out from the west and it will meet you first. Because you are hearing something the rest are not hearing. May God be your helper. May we move to the point where God is a helper and not just an instructor. Let it be such a habit. You see, that's one thing people don't realize no wonder David had this kind of experience. Here is a guy who has learned to rely on God for his battles right from childhood. Right from childhood. Before he took on Goliath, he had to fight the bear. He had to fight the lion. There was nobody even there to cheer him. 
But when he finished, on the day he appeared before Saul, when he shared his testimony, what I like about his testimony, sometimes we read about it and we say, yes, because he presented his CV to Saul and he showed that he had fought a lion, he fought a bear. He said, the same God that gave me victory over these creatures because he knew it wasn't his smartness. He said, the same God that gave me victory over these creatures, he would take on this one too called Goliath. And then eventually when he shows up in front of Goliath, what does he tell Goliath? If you look at 1 Samuel 17, what does he tell Goliath? He said, look, you come to me with a sword. You come with a spear. And you have a javelin. You are tooled up. You are tooled up. You have all the ammunition. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel that you have defied. In fact, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And no wonder. He does it. He tells him. And he strikes him. That's how... He won his battles and eventually ends up becoming a king and the Philistines show up. So when the Philistines show up, he knows that no, this thing you don't fight with armies. Go and ask the Lord of hosts first because he always has the master plan. Even if he's going to use the armies, he changes the way he uses those armies. Have you noticed? He changes the ways he uses those armies. Sometimes there are even people God has placed in our lives as agents of favor in our lives. But there are times when God would instruct us on how to deal with them. So that you don't put your faith in any man. So that you don't put your faith in any man. You don't even go stressing people you have no business stressing. Say, but I thought you said you would help me. I thought, said, how come that night you are not responding to my phone calls like you used to? The thing is that something has changed. There's been an update in heaven. Things have moved on. In fact, God has actually found a bigger, better agent of favor for you. But because you are not in touch, because you are not in constant touch, you didn't receive that tweet. That information did not get to you. So you are pestering somebody. In fact, you are pestering them so much they've stopped talking to you. And he said, people are wicked. People are wicked. How come? He was supposed to have held me. Heaven has moved on. If you were in touch, you would have discovered that in fact, the best thing that could have happened to you was that person moving on. God has moved you to a new level. He's bringing in a new person. He's bringing in a new grade. He's opening a new door. He's bringing new harvest. But it's only when we are in constant touch with him that he's able to direct our path. Because you see, unless you are consistently present before God, he cannot coach you. Anybody who's involved in any form of sports, you know. You can't be coached by anybody if you're not available. No. Because the coach has to direct your path and watch you. And sometimes get you to do things multiple times and tell you, you didn't do this one very well. In fact, I, I want... 10 iterations of this one. I want you to it, repeat this thing 10 times and you're like, why 10? Isn't 5 enough? No. A good coach says, no, I want 10. But if you are not available, how can you be coached? May God bring us to that point where we will move from just dealing with God as if he's just an instructor that shares general information to a point where he starts to direct our steps. Where we are primed in our ears to listen to him. So that he will order our steps aright. You know, I, I like what the psalmist says in Psalm 16. Psalm 16 verse 8 to 11. Let's read it very quickly. I don't want to keep you too long. Psalm 16 verse 8 to 11. It says, I have set the Lord. Psalm 16, 8 to 11. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. Why? He said, for you will not leave my soul in show. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, our pleasures forevermore. Most often we quote the second part, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And we leave the first part of the same verse. You will show me the path of life. 
Because if he shows you the path of life, trust me, you will not miss his presence. If he shows you the path of life, trust me, you will walk into his pleasures. Because if he shows you the path of life, then truly, you will not be moved. You will not be surprised and scared by things because you will have the Lord always before you. In all your ways, you will acknowledge him. You will have him always before you and so the direction will be consistent and it will happen regularly. May we get to that point where our walk with God goes beyond just the direction we receive from our pastor. Yes, I'm a pastor as well, just as a few of us here. But I can teach, I can instruct, I can encourage. But you and I know that I am not your savior. You and I know that with the best of intentions, I'm not the one who's to direct you every single step of your life. I tell those that I pastor in Dominion Center and other places, you are not going to be calling me every day and asking me, man of God, should I travel? Should I not travel? I am not an Old Testament prophet. We all have access to the throne of grace that we can come boldly to obtain help. If we are in touch, whatever goes on in the spiritual realm, God will direct your path. God will send the right people to you. You will know the times and seasons even before it's announced. Something within you will keep telling you, this is what I should do. Don't do this. Be consistent. Don't do that. May God bring us to that level. Frankly speaking, when you get to that point, you don't follow the crowd. You take steps and people are confused. Why? Everybody's going this way. Why are you going this way? Well, it's simply because you have a helper. Time will not allow me to go into detail. If you go home, just read Genesis 26. I just love that experience that Isaac had with God. The Bible says there was a time when there was a famine in Israel. Just as the famine was in the days of Abraham. And he set off to go. In fact, he went off to a place called Gerah. He was actually on his way to Egypt. Then the Bible tells us in Genesis 26. Okay, they showed it. Genesis 26. The Bible says in verse 2 that the Lord appeared to him and said to him, Don't go down to Egypt. You live in the land I will tell you of. You need to understand the background. His father Abraham, when there was famine in that time, went to Egypt. So when the time came and there was famine, he was doing what he saw his father do. And frankly, it was logical because there was food in Egypt. So everyone was going to Egypt and he joined. And then suddenly God comes and says, you, you in particular, Egypt is not for you. How? Why? He said, don't go there. But live in the land which I will tell you of. Which land? The next verse may have disappointed some 21st century Christians. He's sitting there, right there in Gera. He has not arrived in Egypt. He said, dwell in this land. This one. But then he says, dwell in it and I will be with you and bless you. For you and your descendants I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. What he's simply telling him is this. You are not supposed to go with them. Because you are a child of covenant. And because you are a child of covenant. There are certain things you need to know. Number one. I will be with you. Presence. And then I will bless you. He said, I'm going to bless you and I'll bless you because I have a covenant. So the blessing has to come on you. So even though you are not joining those who are going to Egypt to go and enjoy, you will stay in this place called Gera and I will bless you where you are. And when I said, because of time, when you get home, read it. You will find out that God blessed him right there and blessed him so much that the Philistines who were there came to him and said, you have become too mighty. You have become mightier than us. We beg you, move. You are oppressing us with your prosperity. Move because it's too much. Because things started happening that did not make sense to them. They were in a drought. The wells had been sealed. There was a drought. There was no water. Whenever he dug the well, there was water. He dug the first one, they fought. He dug the second one, they fought. 
He ducked under when they fought. Until somebody finally worked out that, hold on a minute, we are not getting this strategy correct. Before this guy came, we couldn't find water. Now he came, he ducked the first well. We said, yeah, the well, the well is ours. He ducked the second well. We said, of course, that one too is ours. But then hang on, if it's yours, where's the water? And you've been digging and there's no water. Until somebody finally worked out that, hold on, the only constant in this whole thing is this boy called Isaac. And it looks like whenever he hits the ground, water flows. So the issue is not with the water. The issue is not with the ground. The issue is not even with the location. The issue is with something that's sitting on this guy's head. So he will, they will dig the well. They will fight and he will leave the well for them. Whilst they are enjoying the little well that they have, he will turn around and dig another one. Then they will hear that another problem has occurred for them. Water has shown up. Until eventually when he dug Rehoboth, the Bible says they did not strive anymore. That's when they worked out it's pointless. This issue is not about location. The guy is carrying something. He's a child of covenant. Blessing is following him. So although he's in the land of Gerah and they can't find water, this guy everywhere he goes is finding water. The reason why he's finding water is because he's walking in the direction of God. He is, his path is being directed by the Lord. The Lord is truly his helper. And so people have gone to Egypt. He is staying here but he is enjoying water. Can I surprise you? The reason why God will bless you is not because you are in Canada. I don't want to upset somebody. But when you come to that understanding with God being your helper, you understand something. When God is your helper, God will define the place called there for you. And it's not going to be the same as others. It's not going to be the same as others. God has not called me to settle in Canada. I have been here for past 11 days. Tonight, I'm out. I'm out. I live in Accra, Ghana. That's the place I heard God tell me 21 years ago. Moved me from UK and said, go there. And since I've been there, there has been water in the well. Oh, there has been water in the well. Trust me. There has been water in the well. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to others. I had people ask me. Somebody asked me in a radio interview. Why did you move that way? Everybody's going the other way. Frankly, it was only when they asked me that question in the interview. That's when you don't know me. That's true. I said, it's simple. Because I heard God say I should go this way. And when God says it, who am I to argue? I don't have any problem, no. So now I go to the UK, maximum two weeks, I'm out. I can't even stand the place. Not because there's any problem with the place. No. But for me, my helper says there's a place called there and it's in Accra. So for now, that's where I've been. 21 years, I haven't regretted a single day. Don't just be following the crowd because people are following. May the Lord be your helper. May he be the one that will hold your hand and guide you and direct you so that you take certain steps. You will find some of us later in your prior time, God telling you something. As we are going on and doing the glory trail, something may open up in Edmonton and God will say to you, Tayo, you, you belong to Edmonton. Uh, but they said, which day? Connect to the headquarters. Let that be your regular practice. You'll be amazed what God will do with you. People will come back later and they see you say, ah, we never thought you would survive in Vancouver. What we are hearing now, maybe we should all move. You see, whenever the door opens for somebody, there's a crowd that wants to follow. Let God be your helper. Let him be the one who will direct your steps. And when that time comes, you will know within you that the time has come for me to respond to his voice. And as we do so, you will see God open doors that you never thought was possible. You will see God fight your battles like he fought for David. First time he said, go and fight. Second time he said, no, strategy has changed. I will fight for you. There are people in this room. That's what God wants to do. He wants to reposition you. He wants to show you something where you will see his hand at work in your life. And the things you have been trying to do all this while, suddenly he will take over. 
and what you have been trying to achieve in five years, he will get it done in five months. When he breaks out, it won't make sense. But who on earth told us and convinced us that everything God does should make sense to us? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So what makes you think because of that degree in philosophy that you can explain God? Please, knowledge is limited. We all love knowledge and it's important that we should all get knowledge. I'm a strong believer in that everybody should strive to be competent and be as qualified as possible. I'm a strong believer in that. But I read that Canada is the most educated country in the world. One third of your population are college degree holders. Fantastic. But when you are working with God and he's your helper, he will show you that there's knowledge and there's knowledge. Grab all the knowledge you can get. Get it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. But as you walk with him, there's direction that will start to give you. And he will open doors for you that will shock the people around you. That even where you are working, they place you on the project everybody expects to be the graveyard projects. You know, there are certain projects when they put you on, you are beginning to wonder whether your seniors want to get rid of you. But when they place you in that desert, water will flow for you. Your results will be different. Your results will be supernatural because God is your helper. When they send you to that branch that nobody has ever succeeded, when you show up there, you begin to excel. They will have to call you back. And when they call you back, you're not just coming back because they have to promote you. Because what no one thought could be turned around, God will turn it around in your hands. And that's when you come back. And when you come back, you can't come at the same place. You have to come at a higher level. And even those who turn their noses at you in disgust, now they have to celebrate you willingly or unwillingly. They have to celebrate you because God has changed your level of operation. Oh, may God take us to that level where we begin to relate to him as our helper, directing us every step of the way. Please, no matter what God does for you, don't get to the point where you think you can do it all by yourself. Sometimes the biggest challenge we have is a testimony. Yes. Sometimes your previous testimony can be your biggest obstacle. You receive that testimony, you think you've arrived. No. There are bigger things coming. God wants to stretch you. There are bigger things. Believe him for bigger things. And you'll be amazed the doors that he will open. You'll be amazed he will make you such a blessing that you'll look back later and think, ah, if I had known this earlier on, I should have started believing him much earlier. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. And don't let the enemy deceive you and say, oh, this is only reserved for some special people. As a New Testament Christian, our faith is not about us coming to the house of God, come and watch a superman or a superwoman perform. The only superman in our lives is Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Savior. He's ready to use anybody, anywhere, to do anything that he has purposed. Don't sit back and say, this one is for the man of God. You're also a man of God. This one is for the women. You are also a woman of God. The only thing that we have in common that binds us and that's why wherever you come from in this planet, you are still my sibling. You are my brother. You are my sister. Because it's the blood of Christ that binds us together. And that blood is the one that broke down the middle wall of partition and gave all of us access to that throne. Because of that, for those who believe in him, all things are possible. All things are possible. Don't let the enemy trick you into thinking, I don't qualify. No. From today, avail yourself. Avail yourself. Say, Lord, I want you to truly be my helper. Order my steps. Every single day of my life, order my steps. Order my steps. That your perfect will will be done in my life. Lord, that you will use me and make me a walking testimony that others will see my life and they, you see, they will see your hand at work in my life in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your hands and talk to him right now. Let that be your prayer. 
Order my steps, O oh God. Order my steps, O oh God. Use me, Lord. Direct my steps in the name of Jesus. Every single day of my life, may I not miss your voice. May I not miss your voice, Lord. Direct my path in the name of Jesus. Direct my path in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Reveal yourself to us like more than ever before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is that how you celebrate the servant of God for that powerful word? Glory to God. You know, as Pastor was, was preaching, I just want us to be sensitive and to take advantage of spe special moments. This is off script. It's not on the agenda. But I'm just led to do this. All right. As pastor was speaking, he was releasing things into us. And um, 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 Pastor Deepo is going to come and bless everyone shortly. But I want to kindly request that Pastor Ellen should pray for our worship team. I sense that there is a sound that is rising from this house. And we can't just allow her just bring it here and take all of it you know she can give us some right yeah and it will reduce what she carries right and it will multi multiply the impact all over the globe can everybody just raise their hands to heaven and let's just trust god for a release this is a very sacred moment oh my help has come oh my help my help us. Oh, my help has come. My help has come. Come on, are there any hungry people in the room? Psalm says in Psalm 16 verse 3 he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God many will see and fear and put and trust in the Lord and I believe that's one of the assignments as those who lead worship worshipers in the house of God those who stand up front to bring leadership in worship that God has put a song in our mouth and that song is a song of praise that is directed to God, not to human beings, but to God. And that as we lift up our voice with those songs, many will see, they will see the results of God's power. They will see and they will fear. There will be salvation. There will be deliverance. There will be insight. God's power will be released as we lift up our voice. And it says that they will trust and will trust in the Lord. Many will hear a song. It will be healing to their soul. And they will trust in the Lord. Many will hear a song that you will lift up to heaven. You will lift up that song before the Lord. And they will put their trust in the Lord. Salvation will be released. Depression will be broken. Anxiety will be broken. Darkness, the cover of darkness will be broken. As God puts a new song in your mouth every time you stand up here no matter how many times you sang that song 
ten times, but it will be a, a new song. It will be a new song in your mouth. You will declare it. Many will look and they will see and they will put their trust in the Lord. Deliverance shall break out. It shall be a therapeutic song. It brings deliverance. It soothes that soul like it soothed the soul of Saul, the king who had a demon upon him. But as the David played that harp, you will play that instrument and that soul will be soothed. That demon will disappear, will leave in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask your mighty hand upon everyone who serves in the area of worship in this house. Whether you're playing an instrument or you're leading worship or backing worship, whichever area, we ask, oh God, Father, let your hand be mighty upon them, oh God. Let your hand be mighty upon them. Use them beyond what they have imagined. Use them beyond what they have imagined, Father. Strengthen them for the work that is ahead of them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Where they have thought, oh, I'm just little. It's just, I'm just small. Lord, may they see you, the one who is mighty, the one who is backing them, the one who has gone before them, the one who leads and guides, the one who shines light on their path, that as they stand here, they will not just sing songs. They will not just play instruments, but by your power and by your authority, they will lead people into the promised land. They will dance songs of celebration. They will dance songs with songs of celebration. They shall lead your people with joy, with celebration, with wisdom and with insight, O oh God. Let your mighty hand be upon them, Father. And let every distraction, every distraction in friendships, associations be broken. Be broken. Every ungodly distraction be broken in the name of Jesus Christ and let your purpose concerning these men and women who serve you in the area of music worship Lord let your purpose be done and may their eyes continually be fixed on you the author and the finisher of their faith in Jesus name amen Amen. Thank you so much, man. Church, I just want each and every one of us to stretch forth our hands in the direction of God's servant. What we received this morning was not just a sermon. It was an urgent update from heaven. So just stretch forth your hands. Please open your mouth. You've been poured into. It's time for you to pour now. And say, Father, I would thank you for sending this word our way. Thank you for routing and ordering the steps of your servant to deliver this urgent word today. Father, I will pray for him. A new level of anointing, new level of grace, impact in ministry, all that concerns him and the work of his ends from his base to the ends of the earth. Deeper, 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 deeper. That when we hear from the camp, it will be good news upon good news. Father, we'll give you all the glory. Praise be unto your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please help me jam those hands together and just celebrate the grace of God. Praise God. I'm not supposed to be on stage. She's the one supposed to be on stage. No, it's fine. Uh, but um, seven years ago today. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Must be nice. <laughs> I told her it too. Seven years ago today. Please just help me tell her I still do. And I'll still do forever. A glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. We love love. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, my husband. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's welcome our first timers. Praise God. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, please kindly just wave. We'd like to see you. Say hello to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, Pastor Lamide at the back there was my pastor when I was on campus. So please, can we just go and say hello to her, please? She took care of me as a young, how old was I, 16, 17? She took care of me. She was always so nice. Always a word in season. Thank you for coming. I was so shocked to see her today. But she said she was coming here to surprise me. So thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And for bringing your wonderful children. 
Praise God. This is KICC. On behalf of our senior pastor and on behalf of our resident pastor, Pastor Matthew Shimolo and Pastor Diala Klein, we'd just like to say thank you for coming. God bless you. <laughs> we'd like to see you after the service as well. So please don't be in a hurry. Praise God. If this is your second time worshiping with us, can we see your hand? Second time. Oh, yay! Praise God. You guys are even more special. We have a gift for you. Praise God. So please don't be in a hurry. Ushers, please kindly take notes and just help us give them the special gifts we have for them. Praise God. So we're going to give our offering now. Can we have our offering confession, please? Can we rise as we um, say our offering confession? Hallelujah. We're all going to say it together. The ways to give are also on the screen. If you just scan that QR code, you find all the ways to give. If you'd like an envelope as well, just wave your hands and the ushers are going to bring one your way. Okay, so we have, we have one, two, three here. Ushers, help us four. If you don't mind, just keep waving so that they know where exactly to come to. In front, we need some envelopes, please. Just give us a minute. <laughs> okay. Also here. Okay. And we have another side. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, are we ready? Oh, we, ha we need one more, please. Two more. Any more? Any more? We're good? We're good? Okay. Okay. Praise God. All right. One, two, three, go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come with thanksgiving from my heart to honor you with my life and with my substance. I rejoice for grace in my life, making it possible not to appear before you empty. As I have come with my seed, my offering, and my tithes, I decree that the devourer is rebuked for my sake. That my gates are continually open and the wealth of nations are delivered and multiplied unto me. I am greatly increased by virtue of my obedience and I unlock supernatural abundance over everything I lay my hands upon in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're just going to call up Pastor Dipo to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Andy. <laughs> Powerful message. Were you blessed? Yes. I just uh, popped in because my sister was our last born, was going to be 50. So we said we should come. And I have my senior brother, Dr. Ademola Oluyomi, at the back there. You know. We just we came from the UK just to surprise her. Praise God. <laughs> he's a faithful God and he's a prayer answering father. Just a few uh, words. God wants us to live life without limits. And I want you to know that that's what's going to happen here to KICC Canada and to you personally in the name of Jesus. Just one scripture before I pray. One scripture. And that's Matthew chapter 16 in the message translation verse 19. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. It says, and that's not all you will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. And a no on earth is no in heaven. That is... Our lives as Christians, as people of God, is not meant in any way to be disconnected from heaven. You see, I'm still learning it. 
And I was preaching this in my church last Sunday. Living life without limits. And the only way you can live life without limits is to always engage with the limitless one. Jesus Christ our Lord. The source from whom all blessings flow. And I believe that will be your portion. As KICC Canada, as a family that's represented here and individuals that are here today, that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want us to pray for our pastor who, I mean, seventh year anniversary of your wedding. Okay, praise the Lord. You are just starting. <laughs> Amen. God is faithful. I want us to pray for them. I want us to pray with you. That should not just pass by without us praying for them. Seven is the number of God. You have come into perfection. Hallelujah. There shall be a manifestation. There shall be a performance of his word in your life beyond whatever you've seen or done before in the name of Jesus. Let's stretch our hands towards them. Father, we thank you. We bless you for our brother, our pastor here, and our sister. Lord, that from today, a new level, a new season, enlargement, increase, advancement on every side. The wisdom to navigate the next season granted to them. The wisdom, the understanding they need. Lord, let it be their portion. In the name of Jesus, that concerning them, no evil shall befall them. No plague will come near their dwelling. You will give your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. They will not dash their foot against a stone. Because you who keep Israel, you neither slumber nor sleep. Bless the work of their hands. Make room for them in this land. Make room for them in this land. Make room for them in this land. We thank you. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. We cover them with that blood of Jesus. And let better things begin to happen for them. Better finances. Better breakthroughs. Better in all areas. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. So lift up your hands and just look at your brother and your sister and just tell them, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Tell them, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever now tell them again say I'm so blessed and highly favored this year is my year of evident progress and I'm going higher say higher say higher in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please help me celebrate Dr. Tiko. Would you like Dr. Tiko to come back for us? Not just to pass by, to come back. If you shout well, he will book that flight. All right, all right. Would you want Pastor Andy to come back? Pastor Andy to come back? Not just to pass by. So you have heard, sir. <laughs> Glory to God. The International Graduate of Champions commences on Wednesday. The general sessions, because of the time zone, afternoon here will be the evening sessions. I know some of you have registered for the School of Ministry. Please do not miss it. Our daily prayers continue. Something special is happening here on Friday. I hear, I hear that this Friday is the last Friday of the month. Did anybody hear? So what does that mean? What does that mean? Glory to God. 
So in all the announcements, there's already an atmosphere of joy already. So I don't want to bring too many words. Choir, please, can you come on stage? There's a song that we've been releasing from here. Ushers, please, for um, the baskets for those envelopes so that we can return them. Ushers, thank you. Glory to Jesus. We we'll shout three powerful times that the Lord is good and his mercy is endure for anybody ready to rejoice. Hey, I didn't hear them. Anybody ready to rejoice? For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. One more time victoriously. For the Lord is good. God bless you. God bless you. part of what God is doing in our midst, feel free to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. To be a part of the giving, you can give our email at info, I-N-F-O, at kicccanada.ca or through our website at www.kicccanada.ca slash donate. God is doing amazing things in our midst and we look forward to seeing you soon. Remember, you're a champion. God bless you.